Welcome to the A-Level Art, Craft and Design Information and Taster Lesson. So, this is our team. We have Mrs Quirk, she is the subject leader for Art and Photography. Mrs Charles, that's me, I teach Art, Photography and Textile Design. We have Mrs Winters, who teaches Art and Photography. And lastly, but definitely not least, we have our lovely art technician, Miss Faulkman, who is very knowledgeable across the subjects we offer. This is our team. This is one of our lovely art rooms. We would have been in here today if we were in school. We would have got glue guns out and made a big mess and had a bit of fun. But unfortunately, we have to be at home. But we'll do something fun, I promise. We have got two other art rooms in the main school building. So there are three art rooms in total. And we have an A-level art studio where you can go in your study period and do some extra artwork. Let's hear from one of our ex-students, Ellie, who finished her A-level this summer. Hi, I'm Ellie and I studied English Literature, Film and Art. The reason I studied art is because it's always been my favourite subject and I plan on studying architecture at uni. I chose to stay on at Huston Essex and study art because I knew the department very well um, I had a really good bond with the teachers already, teachers already and I think when you have a good bond it's easy to express your ideas and creativity and also the facilities are very good. I learnt a lot of skills on the course, um, two being time management because obviously you're going to have to meet a lot of deadlines and the second being how to deal constructive, deal constructive criticism. My favourite part of the course is probably at the start of each project because you get given a set of briefs or starting points and you can go down any path and there's so much freedom in it and you can be as creative as you want. And no one's ideas end up the same, everyone has completely different ideas. The advice I'd give someone who wants to study art A-level is use your time effectively because the workloads do build up and it becomes very overwhelming at times, at times, but just have fun and enjoy yourself too. Thanks Ellie for your thoughts. Many of our alumni have gone on to study some fascinating courses at some of the best art establishments in the country. As you can see, the course is split into two units. As with your GCSE, the first unit is your coursework. This is referred to as your personal investigation. It is worth 60% of your whole A-level, so pretty important. You will see that this also includes a written essay. This has to link to your practical project work and it's part of your assessment objective one, which I'll talk about later. At A-level, you will decide on the direction of your project. You will be spending approximately a year on this project. So you need to make sure you choose a theme that provides you with enough scope for both the practical and written element of your coursework. Coursework consists of sketchbooks, possibly larger or 3D sampling outside of your books and your final outcome. And also that linking essay. Don't worry, we will not be asking you for your theme on day one. We will be discussing it lots in lessons during your first term, but you don't need to decide until later on. Your unit two is called your externally set assignment. This means you will receive an exam paper from EDUCAS, that's our exam board, which will give you a dozen or so starting points. You'll choose one of these to base your project on. You'll have approximately 12 weeks to research it and then you'll sit a 15 hour exam. Most of you would have been working to similar assessment objectives uh, to these uh, for your GCSE. 
each assessment objective is equally weighted. So each assessment objective is as, as important as the other. Being consistent is really important. So assessment objective one is your contextual understanding. So in plain speak, this is artist research. That's where your essay sits as well. So that's where that will be marked. Your assessment objective two is your creative making. So that's everything about the journey of your idea, your planning, your practicing, your modifying, all of those experiments and samples that you do, that all comes under AO2. You need to really make sure you're displaying your journey and evidence in it clearly. Assessment objective th three is your reflective recording. So that's your drawing, photography, um, analysis, diaries, all of those things come under your assessment objective three. And then your assessment objective four is your personal presentation. So that's your final outcome. So earlier I touched on the topic of not having to decide on your theme until later on in the course. And here's why. In the first term, you will be delivering workshop, or you will be delivered workshops by the art department staff. These will incorporate lots of different techniques, processes and experimentation. We deliver workshops such as printmaking, crafting, bookbinding, drawing and painting, to name a few. These will help you to develop your skills in that first term and hopefully inspire you to add some of these techniques into your personal investigation project. In term two, we'll be asking you to decide on a topic for your personal investigation. It's time, you need to decide. Uh, this is gonna run for, an, for a year, you can see there. Alongside this, you'll be writing your essay relating to what you are researching for your unit one. We ask for the written study to be finished by the end of the summer term in year 12. That way, in year 13, you can really focus on the practical final outcome and really ensure you are covering all of the assessment objectives thoroughly. In February of year 13, you will receive that externally set assignment. So that's when you have that 12 week period and then your 15 hour exam. The A-level course builds upon all of the things that you have learned during the GCSE course and encourages you to be much more experimental and independent. You'll need to develop practical and theoretical understanding of materials and processes, how ideas, feelings and meanings can be conveyed and interpreted in images and artworks, how images and artworks relate to social and cultural contexts and using specialist terminology. You will also need to develop your skills in a variety of media, explore relevant sources, make your own judgments and also apply all of your knowledge and understanding to the development of creating your own ideas. We do intend to run life, a life drawing programme next year for you guys, the year 12s. Don't worry, we give you prior warning. We won't spring anything on you and we will send a letter asking for parental permission to discuss this beforehand. Equipment and materials. There is an opportunity to purchase some basic art equipment and materials from the department, including sketchbooks. But we do expect you to have your own supply of art materials at home to work with. If you know you like working with watercolours or inks, for example, make sure you have some at home. We don't expect you to have everything. At the end of year 13, you will have a final exhibition, which is really, really exciting. It's fantastic to see everyone's work displayed. Once you have finished the course um, and all of the work has been internally marked, the art department, with the help of you guys, will put up the A-level exhibition. It is an opportunity to celebrate all of your hard work and hopefully share all of your gorgeous outcomes with your friends and family. I've just attached some more slides here to show you some of the outcomes that we've had previously. Don't worry, you don't need to know your topic just yet. Okay, so we're going to start the practical part of our induction lesson now. Due to everyone being at home, we wanted to choose a task that would be accessible and adaptable for all of you. No excuses. 
You can pause the video once you have read the equipment list and gather some items you may, you may want to use or watch the whole video, make notes and give it a go straight after. Drawing is an important element of the course and many of us are self-conscious about our own drawing skills. Regular drawing and giving yourself the time and freedom to be experimental with your work is really, really important. It doesn't always have to be perfectly executed. Sometimes the best drawings are the ones that have the little quirks in them. It would be lovely to know that throughout the summer you are regularly being creative and the exercises we are doing today are going to help you with this. I have also developed my drawings from today's task with some experimentation. Extending my work is an important part of my creative journey. They're not always super successful, but I've extended them and I can give you some tips on how to do that at home. So all you're going to need is some cartridge paper that can be in a sketchbook or not, whatever you have at home, a biro and something to time yourself with. You're also going to want to think about where you're going to want to do this. A nice location where you've got lots of shelves uh, or a bookcase, something that is nice and long, that's got lots of things on that you can just sit there and study and draw. OK, have a little think about where you could do that at home and think about the comfort element of it as well. Make sure you can be comfortable. I escaped to my craft cabin slash potting shed to mostly hide from my offspring. When you do any drawing, especially if you're a little bit rusty, it is always a good idea to complete some timed warm up drawings first. These are fun and also you can usually be pleasantly surprised by the energy and looseness of them. Get ready for your first warm up drawing. OK, so this is what I'm looking at when I'm drawing. I've set myself up a nice space, a nice comfortable space so that I can see this um, and I've got all my stuff out ready. Okay, So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do my first warm up drawing. This is going to be a three minute continuous line drawing. A continuous line drawing, if you haven't done one before, is a line that is when you don't take your pen off the page. So it's like drawing with one super long piece of string. You can do cross hatching, you can go back over your lines, you can cross over your lines, but you cannot take your pen off the page and you need to get as much information on that page as possible. We're not being really tight and methodical, we're getting as much information on that page as possible. So three minutes, continuous line drawing. If you want to pause the video and give it a go, then give it a go. And uh, let's see what happens. Go. OK, so you should have your first drawing now. What are you thinking about it so far? This is your first drawing. You might not have done a drawing for a while. So have a little look, see what you think. OK, we're going to move on to our second drawing. OK, warm up two. Oh, this is my masterpiece here. OK, so this is a two minute blind drawing using your biro. Remember, no pencils here, just biro. OK, so a blind drawing is when you don't look at your page. So you can put something under your chin with your non writing hand and so that you can't cheat. It's very important not to cheat. OK, you're going to place your pen somewhere on the page. Think about where you want to start your drawing and think about the location on the page. You're going to place your pen down and you are going to start drawing without looking at your page. OK, so this is a two minute drawing. Do not cheat. Don't look at your page. Look how lovely and quirky mine is. OK, don't look at the page. Set yourself up with your timer. Two minutes. On your marks, get set, go. OK, how did that go? Is it as gorgeous as mine? OK, let's move on to drawing three. OK, warm up three. So there are no restrictions here. So you can look at your page 
and obviously we want you to look at your shelf as well but you are limited to two minutes so I suppose that is a restriction so time restriction two minutes try and get as much information on the page I don't want you to be really precise around one object we're just trying to map everything out see how much you can get on that page on your marks get set go Okay, are you feeling warmed up? How do you feel about these drawings so far? Okay, the main task, the main event today. You can see here, I would like you to do a 20 minute continuous line drawing. So like that first warm up drawing, the three minute one, we're gonna do the same thing, but for 20 minutes. I want to see more detail, I want to see more tone and line so you can do cross hatching without taking your pen off the page. You can do other sorts of mark making too to get the tones and to get the detail into your objects. You have 20 minutes to do this. I've done a time lapse of me drawing my shelf for 20 minutes. So here we go. I'm going to show you how it turned out. Look at my bobbling head. I move it a lot. Get that detail in, get those marks in so you can put shadow and depth into your work. Remember, don't take your pen off the page. And voila. Okay, so here's my 20 minute continuous line drawing that I did in my potting shed. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend from it. So if you don't want to extend into your original drawing, then what you can do is if you have got one of those like three in one printers, you know, quite a few people have got those printer, scanner, photocopier jobbies at home where you can scan things what I did with this drawing is I photocopied it a couple of times in that printer so that I could keep my original but then I could also work on different drawings as well so I have I start to gather a collection of drawings so that's what I did so I I um, photocopied through my um, home office printer my drawing onto cartridge paper so I've still got that lovely art quality paper so if you're working in a sketchy book you might need to tear a few pages out and just feed it through your printer and you can print out um, your work several times to work on. Before I worked into it with wet materials I actually um, took a photo of it and put it onto my com computer and I did a little bit of tweaking on um, Photoshop or any other editing program. So this is the first edit that I did of my drawing. So what I've done, and if you've looked at the um, transition packs that we made for you uh, earlier on in lockdown, there's a repeat pattern transition pack uh, worksheet. And this is following some of the guidelines from that. So if you haven't given that a go yet and you want to do that with your continuous line drawing, I think this has worked quite well. I did it very quickly. So there are obviously some bits that I could tweak and improve, but the repeat pattern is really nice. And I feel like if I could then print that out again and work into it, maybe with some paint or cut out some windows in it and things like that, that could actually be a really, really interesting piece that I can extend even further. Then I worked into it with wet material. On the left side, 
You can see here where the um, little mustard jar is. I've used some inks. I've cut out a window at the back and collaged some paper in. I've collaged a photo of the original building that was in my photo. So I've taken my photo of my shelf and I've cut that out and collaged it in. And I've also collaged some other paper into there as well and used some silver pen to colour in that photo. On the right hand side, I've used lots of ink and water and I've worked into my piece. I've made it really messy. So there's lots of colour there and I really like the the puddles of ink that create those lovely lines and creases in there. So that's what I've done on that one. On this one, I've been a lot more um, restrictive. I haven't been as creative and as loose with my ink, but this is another experiment with ink. So you can see you can do lots of different things. And you know, if you've got coloring pencils at home, pens, anything else that you want to throw at your piece give it a go be experimental you know I'm not saying these are not um these are not fabulous in any way but they're experiments and they're extending and I'm getting more ideas and I want to do more create creative things and that's the main thing if you enjoyed observing your collection and you feel like you really know it well and you want to do a really lovely refined drawing and really practice your drawing a little bit more, then you can set yourself another timed task. So, you know, I felt like I really got to know my drawing, uh, my shelf that I did. So I really wanted to do some, um, some more sustained drawing of my piece. So you can see here I've done this... Uh, this biro drawing again no pencil allowed it has to be biro okay and I have done an hour and 30 minutes on this drawing here so by the end of my drawing challenge I have my original 20 minute continuous line drawing with my warm-up drawings but I also have these four extra drawings from my time so I've generated loads of work and experiments from just a few warm-up drawings and a couple of main drawings so you know I'm pleased with the collection of work that I've got and I can see from this slide that I can extend even further I'm just thinking about it now so I hope you enjoyed that taste a lesson and I hope you give it a go and I hope you continue to practice over the summer also, if you haven't already done so, have a look at the transition packs that we've made for you. There are some really, really interesting things on there. And it's just great to, you know, keep going with your art, be creative. And, you know, even if it's, you know, if, if it's for your well-being, not just for your practice, you know, get involved and be creative. And we would love to see whatever you do uh, when you join us in September. If you have any questions, please contact us and ask. And I look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you for watching.